Hi Blood Talk Flams. Today I have a video on how to properly perform a venum puncture starting from the beginning to an end for straight needle method. Without further ado, let us get into it. Before you can perform a procedure on patient, regardless of what it is, you'll have to identify yourself. Tell the patient who you are, what department you are from, and the reasons you are there. For instance, my name is Peach, I'm a phlebotomist, and I'm here to draw your blood for testing. After you have identified yourself, you will have to identify the patient. Correct patient's identification is the key to patient care. Wrong identifications can lead to wrong diagnosis and treatment. Ask the patients for their full names and date of birth or medical record number. Do not forget to check the patient armband if you are drawing an inpatient. Please watch how this phlebotomist performed the procedure. While you are watching, ask yourself this. Is this to do or not to do? And then we will go over each step together. Now let's discuss what's going on in the video that you just saw. First, prepare the phlebotomist supply. Second, identify the drawing site by palpitating the patient vein. Look for a good bouncing vein, not what is visible by the eye. Start looking for the vein from antecubical site. Generally locate at the bend of the elbow. Third, 
Third, sterilize the area by using alcohol pad in circular motions from inside to outside. If the patient is here for alcohol level testing, do not use alcohol pad. There are other agents that you can use, such as Coropep or Iodine. Fourth, wait for the area to dry before puncture the vein. Do not blow nor wave because you will reintroduce bacteria to the drawing site. During the wait, you can prepare the gauze, bandage, and blood collection tube in the correct order of draw. Fifth, tighten the tourniquet 3 to 4 inch above the drawing site, making sure that the tail of the tourniquet is away from the site. Sixth, carefully handle the needle and aim at the identified vein. Keep your eye on the bevel. The bevel should be up and the pointed end of the needle is aiming at the vein. 7. Use your thumb of the opposite hand that you hold the needle to angle the vein by pulling the skin tuck and keep the vein in place. Don't pull it too tight that you will hurt the patient. 8. Bevel up and gently insert the needle into the patient's vein about 45 degrees. 9. Hold the needle hub with your index and middle finger and push the tube with your thumb. Holding it this way will help absorb the energy to prevent the needle to go in too deep. 10. Wait for the blood to fill up the tube, then gently remove the tube. Holding the hub study with two finger while using the other three fingers to remove the tube. This is to prevent the needle from pulling out as you are removing the tube. 11. As the blood is flowing, let the tourniquet go. Leaving the tourniquet on too long will cause hemoconcentrations and that will interfere with the test results. 12. Remove, then gently invert the field tube a few times to prevent blood clot. And I said gently because you do not want to cause blood to hemolyze. 13. Grab the next tube and repeat the process until you collected all the blood that you need. Note, as you are more comfortable with the process, you can remove the field tube Insert the next one while you're waiting for the new tube to fill. You can invert the previous tube. 14. When you draw the last tube, place a gauze on the needle and remove the needle. Do not press down on the gauze because you will press on the needle that is still in the patient arm. You can also ask the patients to hold the gauze. I usually ask the patient to hold the gauze because that reduces my risk of finger prick as I remove the needle from patient arm. 15. Once the needle is out of the patient's arm, activate the safety device immediately and throw the needle away in the sharp containers. 16. Put a bandage on the patient, then ask the patient to keep a pressure on the site for about 10 minutes. 17. Invert the tubes a few times and label the tube with patient's information. Generally, on the label, you should include your initial, date, and time of draw. As soon as you are done with labeling the tube, let the patient take a look and verify that the information is correct. While you are doing this, you will also keep an eye on the patient, making sure that the patient is doing okay and not fainting. 18. You then thank the patient for his or her cooperation and exit or let the patient go. Hi, Blood Talk fans. Today, I have a video on how to properly perform a venom puncture using butterfly method, starting from beginning to the end. Without further ado, let us get into it. The initial process is the same as straight needle collection because you still have to identify yourself, tell the patient who you are, what departments you are from, and the reasons you are there. For instance, my name is Peach. I'm a phlebotomist from laboratory, and I'm here to draw your blood for testing. After you have identified yourself, you will have to identify the patient. Correct patient identification is key to patient care. Wrong identifications can lead to wrong diagnosis and wrong treatment. Ask the patient for their full names and date of birth or medical record number. Do not forget to check the patient armband if you are drawing an inpatient. Please watch how this phlebotomist performed the procedure. While you are watching, ask yourself this. Is this to do or not to do?
and then we will go over each step together. Now, let's discuss what's going on in the video and step on how to properly perform Vina Puncture. First, prepare the Pabotama supply.
Second, identify the drawing site by palpitating the patient vein. Look for a good bouncing vein, not what is visible by the eye. Start looking for the vein from antecubical site. Generally locate at the bend of the elbow. Third, sterilize the area by using alcohol pad in circular motions from inside to outside. If the patient is here for alcohol level testing, do not use alcohol pad. There are other agents that you can use, such as Coropep or Iodine. Fourth, wait for the area to dry before puncture the vein. Do not blow nor wave because you will reintroduce bacteria to the drawing site. During the wait, you can prepare the gauze, bandage, and blood collection tube in the correct order of draw. Fifth, tighten the tourniquet 3 to 4 inch above the drawing site, making sure that the tail of the tourniquet is away from the site. Six, carefully handle the needle and aim at the identified vein. Keep your eye on the bevel. The bevel should be up and the pointed end of the needle is aiming at the vein. Seven, use your thumb of the opposite hand that you hold the needle to angle the vein by pulling the skin tuck and keep the vein in place. Don't pull it too tight that you will hurt the patient. Eight, Bevel up and gently insert the needle into the patient's vein about 45 degrees. 9. For butterfly, you have two options. First, to let the needle go once you insert the needle and hold onto the hub as you exchange and fill up each tube. The other option is to keep holding the needle and the hub in a similar manner as a straight needle draw and using the other hand to exchange the tube. 10. As the blood is flowing, let the tourniquet go. Leave the tourniquet on for too long will cause hemoconcentrations and that will interfere with the test results. 11. Remove then gently invert the field tube a few times to prevent blood clot and I said gently because you do not want to cause blood to hemolyze. 12. Grab the next tube and repeat the process until you collected all the blood that you need. 13. When you draw the last tube, place a gauze on the needle and remove the needle. Do not press down on the gauze because you will be pressing on the needle that is still in the patient's arm. You can also ask the patient to hold the gauze. I usually ask the patient to hold the gauze because that will reduce my risk of finger prick as I remove the needle from patient arm. 14. Once the needle is out of the patient's arm, activate safety device immediately and throw the needle away in sharp containers. 15. Put bandage on patients, then ask the patient to keep the pressure on the site for about 10 minutes. Sixteenth, invert the tubes a few times and label the tube with patient's information. Generally, on the label, you should include your initial, date, and time of draw. As soon as you are done with labeling the tube, let the patient take a look and verify that the information is correct. While you are doing this, you will also keep an eye on the patient, making sure that the patient is doing okay and not fainting. Seventeenth. You then thank the patients for his or her cooperations and exit or let the patient go. Hi Blood Talk fans! Today I have a video on how to properly perform a vena puncture using the syringe method. 
starting from the beginning to the end. Without further ado, let us get into it. Before you can perform a procedure on patient, regardless of what it is, you will have to identify yourself. Tell the patient who you are, what department you are from, and the reasons you are there. For instance, my name is Peach. I'm a phlebotomist, and I'm here to draw your blood for testing. After you have identified yourself, you will have to identify the patient. Correct patient's identification is the key to patient care. Wrong identifications can lead to wrong diagnosis and treatment. Ask the patients for their full names and date of birth or medical record number. Do not forget to check the patient armband if you are drawing an inpatient. Please watch how this phlebotomist perform the procedure. While you are watching, ask yourself this. Is this to do or not to do? And then we will go over each step together.
Now, let's discuss what's going on in the video. First, prepare the supply. Assemble the syringe needle. The additional supply that you will need for this method is a transfer device. The syringe can be attached to the needle directly or attached to the butterfly needles. Choosing how big the syringe is also important. You want to choose the syringe size according to the amount of blood you need. If you have small hands and handling a big syringe will be difficult for you, you can choose to connect the syringe with the butterfly needles and change multiple syringe with one butterfly needle. Be careful as you are changing the syringe not to pull out the needle. Tape the butterfly tube down if you need it. Second, identify the drawing site by palpating patient veins. A good bouncing veins, not what visible by the eyes. Third, sterilize the area by using an alcohol pad in circular motions from inside to outside. Note that if the patient here for blood alcohol level, do not use alcohol pad. Other agents that can be used are coroprep and iodine. Fourth, wait for the area to dry before puncturing the vein. Do not blow or wave because you will reintroduce bacteria to the draw site. Fifth, pull back the syringe puncher a few times to loosen up so you will have an easier time pulling back once insert into patients. Six, tighten the tourniquet three to four inch above the draw site. Make sure that the tail of the tourniquet is away from the site. Seven, carefully handle the needles and aim at the identified vein. Keep your eyes on the bevel. The bevel should be up and the pointed end of the needles is aimed at the vein. 8. Use your thumb form to add a hand so that you do not hold the needles to angle the vein. By pulling the skin tight and keep the veins in place. Do not pull it too tight that you will hurt the patients either. 9. Bevel up and gently insert the needle into the patient veins at about 45 degree angle. 10. Gently pull back the plunger. Be careful not to pull the needle out. Pull back the plunger until you have collected enough blood to fill up all the required tube. Pulling the plunger back too fast can cause hemolysis of the specimens. Pulling the plunger too slow can cause the blood to clot before you transfer to the tube. 11. Place a gauze over the needle. Do not press down on the gauze because you will press on the needle that is still inside the patient's arms. You can also ask the patient to hold the gauze. I usually ask the patient to hold the gauze because that will reduce my risk of finger prick as I remove the needle from patient arms. 12. Remove the needle and activate the safety device immediately. Put bandage on patients, then ask the patient to keep the pressure on the site for about 10 minutes. Thirteen, carefully unscrew the needle part and dispose into sharp container. Fourteen, get the trifer device and attach it to the syringe. Fifteen, turn the trifer device upside down and insert the tube from the bottoms and let the vacuum do the work. Once the tube is filled up, continue on to the next tube. Once it's all done, discard the syringe and the trifer device into the sharp container. Sixteen. Invert the tubes a few times and label the tube in front of patients. Generally, on the label you will include your initial, date, 
and time of draw. As soon as you are done with labeling the tube, let the patient take a look and verify that it is correct information. While you are doing this, you will also keep an eye on the patient. Make sure that the patient is doing okay and not fainting. 17. You then thanks the patient for his or her cooperation and exit or let the patients go. Thank you for staying with me until the end. What do you want to know next? Do you want to know more about blood bank? Chemistry? Microbiology? If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye.